these crazy times. Um, just to start out with, when the Players Association is talking about you know, not the possibilities for re return to play this summer, how what sort of concern did you have just in terms of you know, this could be a nine to ten month off season for the teams that weren't involved in this 2014 playoff? And do you see any any way that to maybe offset that, maybe some sort of method to help those teams, uh, including you guys, for next season? I know Bots mentioned the possibility of a maybe some sort of a training camp. Yeah, I think uh, – I mean, that was all taken in consideration. It's, it's tough. Uh, it was tough navigating it because, like you said, these are crazy times. And in any situation, I mean, any format that we – decided upon and voted upon there's obviously going to be some pushback and um like i said it's an imperfect situation and it's an imperfect format no matter how you look at it no matter which way you go about it um but ultimately this is what it was agreed upon and um it's it's unfortunate uh, obviously that we're going to miss out just barely but uh that's the way it goes i guess and um but like uh, like you said it, it is going to be a long long time off for us but uh, to handle that question it's it's going to be we're not going to know for sure until we know exact dates of, of when this stuff's going to be starting up. And, and then we can kind of look forward to, all right, how can we can, like you said, maybe a training camp or, you know, like football has uh, OTAs, maybe something like that. I mean, there's just going to be a, a plenty of options for us to, uh, to go through, but I think that's going to have to wait until we for sure have dates locked in. And, and hopefully, I mean, the NHL did, I mean, I don't know if they, I saw Gary Bettman on the today show today and, uh, you know, this is just a format. I know it's, it's going to be, you know, day by day as, as this progresses to see, you know, when we can safely get back to playing. And, uh, you know, hopefully we, we do get back to playing. Hi, Jake. Thanks for doing this. Um, how soon after the pause did you come to the realization that you guys were not going to be able to play regular season games and get back on the ice? Um, I was, um, I mean, once, uh, I mean, I'll remember it vividly. We were in Montreal when the NBA, we were, I mean, it was the night before the game and the NBA canceled their season. And then we pretty much assumed that ours was going to be next. And we were going to be uh, on the plane the next day instead of playing in uh, the Bell Center, which was, it was weird. Um, but uh, shortly after that, I mean, it was, it was a fluid situation. Like everybody was, was following along on Twitter. We were no different. And, um, you know, it was one of those things where you start looking at the calendar and when they're talking about trying to get the regular season in and then maybe the playoffs as well, you know, you start creeping into May and June and, you know, the, the lockdowns are still going on. And, uh, you know, even now it's – they're talking about earliest is uh, a July training camp and, you know, that doesn't leave a ton of room for error as far as uh, getting in this whole format. So, like I said, hopefully, uh, you know, things continue to trend in the right direction and we can – can go about this uh, a safe route uh, uh, to get hockey back on the ice for all fans all over the across the across the world to watch. Hey Jake, John Scott from Spectrum News. Hopefully everything's going as well as it can through all of this. Um, I just was curious. I know it became definitive just about a day or so ago, but have you had a time to reflect on on why this season? went down the path it did for you guys, and ultimately you missed out on the expanded playoffs. Yeah, once I kind of, uh, you know, heard, obviously heard rumblings about the 2014 playoff, um, obviously then uh, that's when you, you started doing more reflecting to have the realization that uh, I'm not going to be playing or we're not going to be playing any more games this year for, um, you know, the 19-20 the season. And uh, especially today I was doing it even in, you know, leading up to this uh this uh, little Zoom meeting, I was thinking about even more, obviously, about what I, how I'd, uh, you know, speak about this year. And it was just, it's one of those things where, you know, once again, we started out great and we just didn't manage our ups and downs as much as, or as much as we needed to. Um, you know, there was times where we were playing really good hockey and then, you know, times where you're going through a slump and, you know, we just couldn't seem to get out of it. And I think that's just going to come with time and, and learning how to win in this league. And, you know, if you have a bad period, a bad shift, you know, it's just one of those things you got to shake off quicker than we have been. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, you know, I think we're, we're maturing as a group. Um, you know, I like a lot of the strides a lot of guys took this year. And um, our coaching staff, I, I, you know, I thought did a, a fantastic job with us being there you know, with uh, Ralph's first year under his belt with us. It was, uh, it was really a joy to work with him. And 
uh, that leaves me optimistic moving forward, especially with, uh, with Ralph leading, leading the charge. I know he's, uh, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, we, we, we still stay in contact, you know, we have meetings with our coaches. I had a meeting with Steve Smith yesterday. So it's, it's one of those things where we're all, we're all staying in contact. It's, it's weird times. Um, but, uh, to look back on the season, I mean, it feels ages ago, really, now after being locked up at home for the last couple of months. But uh, it's just really, it's really frustrating, um, disappointing. Uh, you know, it's all really I can categorize it as. Uh, one positive this year, you guys were a pretty good home team. What went into that? Jason mentioned uh, a bunch of different things, even right down to wearing the white at home, how you guys liked wearing those jerseys. like. What do you think went into just you guys being a good home team this year? That was something we, you know, early on, especially to be to be successful in this league, you, you need to be good at home. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the statistics say, but I mean, if if you're usually around 500 at home or 500 on the road and and have a really good home record, that you know, that really ups your chances of of making the playoffs. And you know, we we did, uh, you know, it was a, a big uh, improvement this year to you know to be having our, our winning record on home ice which was which was great for us I mean it was great for our fans they've been supporting us through uh through these rough these through these rough few years and um you know with it being the 50th anniversary that was uh you know extra special that we could have a you know improve on home ice but uh you know unfortunately we still fall short Uh, Jake, uh, Brayton Wilson here from WGR, uh, Sports Radio 550. Hope you're well during these times, and uh, thanks again for doing this. Um, obviously, you're one of the more veteran players on the team. You're, you're part of the leadership group, and another year's gone by without a, a playoff appearance for you and the team. Just, just talk about how disappointing that is for you guys and, and maybe, you know, maybe what the direction of the, the thought of the group is heading into the, uh, the next season. Mind you, you guys won't be on the ice for a while, but, but you know, when, when you guys get back on the ice, what, what maybe the, the thought process or direction is for the group? Yeah, I, I like you. I mean, it's uh, – with this group, of, you know, even when we went out west, uh, we were still kind of in the thick of it. And, you know, we had a little good stretch there before we went out started that west, uh, west road trip with Winnipeg, Vegas, Colorado, and – Arizona and I mean there was no doubt in my mind that uh you know we're going to go out there and, and do the job and you know, s you know stay in the race and unfortunately you know we played some good hockey but didn't get the results and uh you know that's the bottom line in this league obviously but uh that uh that belief was there in this group which was which is really good to see um moving forward uh it's it's going to be a long time obviously without playing meaningful games until you know who knows when this next season is going to restart but uh I know a lot of guys are going to be chomping at the bit uh, to get going right away. And, um, you know, especially if, you know, if, assuming that this, uh, you know, the 2014 playoff uh, continues to you know, go on as planned. Uh, I know guys are going to, it's going to be interesting, especially, you know, once we do get more dates involved, it's then we'll have a better uh, idea of, because hockey, you know, you're so trained as, especially when you're, get some games played in this league and seasons, uh, seasons under your belt, you understand what your body needs in the summertime when you ramp up your training. And, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, an important thing for us to, to work through with our, with our training staff and coaches to, you know, to understand when, when is that ramp up time? You know, some guys start skating in, in July for the season to or for a training camp in September. So now what's, what's it going to look like? Uh, you know, you're going to have times where you're, you're going to be skating and then you're going to have to take, take breaks to, to rest, uh, you know, not overwhelm your body. So it's going to be interesting to navigate that. And, um, but like I said, it, it's just going to be an excitement going into the next year. Um, that's one thing that, uh, you know, everyone, I think, you know, really looks forward to working with Ralph. He brings energy to the rink every day and, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to lead uh, or follow behind his lead. Hey, Jake, John Warrow here with the Associated Press. It's going to kind of, um, the, the question that was asked was the one I, I was just going to ask, but just to piggyback on that is how knowing there's all this uncertainty and knowing that there's this bad taste and, and, and seeing the glimpses that this team showed of, of being capable and being competitive under Ralph, how, how can you, how, how, how can you keep, how can this team stay motivated and, and remember the good parts of what happened last season um, and, and, 
and enter translate that into next year and how difficult what is the challenges because it could be nine ten months before you guys hit the ice in a meaningful game um i mean the one thing that comes to mind when you ask that is uh when nine and ten months go by you you, you know you, you think a little bit less about the the downfalls of the season and more so just excitement about an optimism about the next season. Um, it's, uh, it's been interesting. Uh, I mean, taking a step back now and reflecting on the season, my, my mind hasn't exactly been there. Um, I've had more important things to worry about with my family amongst, uh, amongst the pandemic and a newborn. So it's, uh, it's, it puts things, puts things in perspective for sure. Um, so I was saying that I, I think just you, you focus on the optimism and, and uh, just the excitement to really, uh, like you said, it's going to be, if you say, you know, nine, 10 months, it's nobody's really going to be thinking about last year. It's going to be just excitement to get going again and, and doing what we love and getting back to our jobs. Hey, Jake, for you guys, you've talked about talking to, Ralph and Jason, how much have you talked to your, your teammates, your fellow players? Who have you talked to? And what have those discussions been about? Is it hockey? Is it what we're dealing with? Just what have those discussions been about with maybe some of your fellow players? Yeah, we, we have a group check going. Um, I try to keep the, I'm, since I'm the PA rep, I've, uh, I've been on the numerous calls, you know, biweekly pretty much throughout this process. And uh, I'll write down notes on my phone and share them with, uh, share them with the group on on what's being said around the league from our, you know, from Don Fear down and through other teams and whatnot. And uh, guys are obviously disappointed with the, uh, with the decision of the 2014 playoff. Like I said, it's an, it's an imperfect situation. So you're always going to have your, you know, you know, grapes about it, but um, you know, we've just been, you know, discussed, I mean, it's really just, I mean, unprecedented times as far as, you know, everyone's been affected. Um, you know, we, we, we have a lot of things to work through as far as, uh, um, a revenue standpoint so that's been discussed as well but you know just from the group of guys you know especially you know I've, I've became really close with you know the same group of guys that uh and I've been here with the longest is you know with you know Sam Jack Oki um you know those those guys that we've, we've been through a lot together so I know we, we stay in contact regularly weekly and um just you know, miss each other really. You know, that's that's almost uh, the worst part about this whole thing is you don't get to go to the rink with your best buddies and and compete with the game you love. Jake, along the lines of the the PA, uh, I was wondering if you'd peel back the door a little bit as that process went on. I mean, at the end, you guys got to a pretty close to unanimous vote, but uh, teams all have divergent views and needs and thoughts on it. How contentious did it get? as it went along with teams discussing this format? Uh, you know what? It really, it really didn't get too contentious. I mean, everyone understands the circumstances and, and uh, just how you, there's no, never been anything like this. You never had to collectively bargain, you know, anything like this before. Um, uh, I was saying that, I mean, everyone, I think, kind of came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, this is, this is the format we were going to go with and, uh, you know, the league and, and the return to play committee, I think just felt that this, uh, you know, they went through tons of different scenarios for, for weeks to, to try to figure out fairness and, and obviously health and safety are at the, at the forefront of it all. Um, just to try to get some type of, uh, of fairness of somehow kind of completing a, a season format into a, a 16 team playoff. And, you know, this is what was, uh, ultimately, uh, agreed upon. And, um, you know, like like I've been saying, you know, every, every you know, with this situation, there's not going to be a, a perfect uh, a perfect opinion, and everyone obviously just in the world today, there's there's going to be uh, you know, disagreements upon everything. Every time you watch the news, someone's uh, arguing about something. So, Jake, you guys obviously improved significantly at five on five this year, um, especially goal prevention. You guys did a lot better defensively. What? What do you think the difference was under Ralph in terms of structure and just the way that you guys were able to play? Yeah, I think you know he simplified things, simplified things for us to, uh, through all you know through all you know D zone or zone, offensive zone. He he put it in uh, you know very simple terms and, and put it in a, almost like a broad structure. So 
it allows us to, you know, use creativity in the offensive zone, be a little bit more structured in a neutral zone and D zone. And uh, in our D zone, like you said, I, I felt uh, a lot more comfortable on my own end and uh, I didn't feel us, uh, you know, running around as, running around too much like we have in the past. And um, that was definitely a positive. And like you said, our five on play, five on five play really improved, but uh, special teams let us down this year, um, which was very disappointing. Uh, penalty kill, obviously, it was very disappointing for myself. And I mean, you know, it's kind of my uh, one of my niches. And you know, we we had a good, great penalty kill. I mean, the year before, and we didn't really change anything. And uh, unfortunately, it's one of those things where you know, confidence started dropping, you know, bad breaks here and there. But uh, it's one of those things where I'm really not uh, I'm not worried about us getting back on track next year because uh, I, I do like our systems in place and I know that we can uh, you know, get the job done. And once again, once when you have Jack Eichel, Rasmus Dahlin, you know, Sam Reinhardt, all these, you know, top class players, I, I know our power play will be, uh, will be just fine as well. Hey, Jay, Cope all as well. Um, as you mentioned, you've gotten to know Jack very well through these years. Um, everyone could see on the ice he took, an, took another step this year, played at another level. As someone who's known him so well off the ice, what did you see this year that really helped him make another jump? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun for me to watch Jack develop this year. Um, the, the, uh, the on-ice product it wasn't a surprise to, to me or really any of us because I, I, you know, I've seen him every day working on his craft and he's as competitive as it gets as you can all see and uh, but it's just his, his steps he took as a leader this year and, and his maturity levels continue to rise it's just it was really fun for me to see uh you know just stand back and watch him sometimes you know I, I watched the I watched the last dance obviously I mean I'm sure a lot of you guys did and you know looking at how big of a you know much of a leader Michael Jordan was and I couldn't help but think about Jack and his competitive drive and trying to make his teammates better this year and how, you know, biggest strides he took, you know, he really, all he cared about this year was just, you know, just trying to be the best captain he could be and, and trying to be uh, day in and day out, just trying to lead this group. And he did that, you know, extraordinarily. And, you know, it's just, it's, he's going to continue to take giant, giant leaps each year. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what, uh, what he does next year. Nick, you know uh, Rasmus Dahlin as well as anyone. I mean, he had a terrific rookie season. But when, when you compare his rookie season to this season, what, what kind of growth did you see in him? Yeah, Ras is uh, – I mean, he's, he's still so young. And uh, it's, it's not easy playing, uh, playing in this league at that age, especially as a defenseman. You know, it's a lot of uh, a young defensemen take a few years to really uh, you know, find their – find their grips in this league and it, it's as a 19 year old to, to take the steps he did this year it was really fun for me to see and um, what I love about Rass the most is he's he's one of the most competitive guys in the ice uh, he doesn't uh, you know guys start you know hitting him or you know tripping at him throughout the game it uh, it just elevates his game to another level and he has this compete and drive uh, you know that really is going to continue to you know take his game to, ne to the next level and the next level after that and you know, as, as, as he continues to get bigger and stronger, it's, it's, it's going to be scary, uh, you know, how uh, high his ceiling is really. He's going to be a, a premier, premier defenseman in this league for a long, long time. Hey, Jake, uh, on the topic of young defensemen, I guess, I'm wondering what you think uh, Henry Yokihara you brought to the back end this year. Henry was awesome. You know, he, he uh, to be honest, he, he really elevated my play uh, once we started uh, – you know, we went down from playing 70 to, to 60 and and to have that uh, comfortability of, of being paired with him for numerous games in a row, we, I thought we developed a pretty good chemistry and I thought that was, almost, you know, my best stretch of the season. And um, I can attribute that to him because, you know, just how steady he is and how good of a puck mover he is and how sound defensively. It's just, once again, really impressive for, you know, a 20-year-old to, you know, to come into this league and, and play like he did. and. That was one of the, I know, a, definitely a, a great pickup for us. And, uh, you know, not a, I, I really didn't know a ton about him. I mean, being a young guy and through training camp, but just the strides he made from training camp to, to I see how he played at the end of the year was, was really great to see. You don't see him make many, you know, mistakes out on the ice. So it's, uh, it's, it's awfully nice to play with someone like that. And, uh, you know, once again, it's between those two, uh, you know, 
the blue line is going to be uh, in a good shape for a long, long time. Hi, Jake. Uh, on that point, how confident do you feel about this defensive group moving ahead uh, into the future just because this was a position that always seemed to be a little bit in, in flux the last couple of years, and suddenly it seems like it's kind of squared away. Do you feel that way about it? Yeah, no, I, I feel really confident within our group, and uh, it's – it was an interesting season because, uh, you know, like you said, we've we've had years in the past where that was maybe a weak point of our of our team. But this year, we, you know, started the season with eight or nine NHL caliber defensemen. So it was, uh, you know, it, it's it was tough to, not tough, but it was uh, it was uh, you know interesting to navigate that because you know every single night there's someone out of the lineup that uh, you know is is a good good player, and it, it's you know it's tough to. It's tough to be that guy. I was that guy a couple of times this year. You know, when, when your play drops off, it, you know, you're going to be the guy sitting out because, you, you know, we have that many competitive, you know, good NHL defensemen on the back end. So that's, a, you know, really a, a positive because it just continues to bring the best out of you, that internal competition. You know, each of us pushing each other every day. Uh, you know, really, I thought, elevated uh, each of our games. And um, it's a good problem to have. Hi, Jake. How are you? Hey, Dover. Uh, how about some uh, info on your new family member and uh, how it all went, uh, how you're handling being a dad, uh, vital stats on the newest McCabe? Yeah, she, uh, she's five weeks old as of Monday. Um, Georgia Ray McCabe. She's quite the sweetheart, so it's been, uh, it's been interesting uh, being first-time parents uh, amongst the pandemic, I'll say that. Uh, my stress levels might be a little higher than normal, but uh, it's, I guess the one positive I do take out of, you know, being in quarantine for the last couple of months, it's uh, my only job is to be a dad. So I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's been nice to be able to spend every day with her rather than I can't imagine having a child and having to go on a long road trip. That'd be uh, that'd be awfully tough. So me and my wife are, uh, you know, really just enjoying and, and trying to soak in every minute we can with her, uh, you know, sitting at home here together. So that's, uh, that's been the one positive to, uh, you know, just uh, focus on being a dad right now. And it's, uh, it's been the best job in the world. Great. Well, thanks everybody for your questions and thank you very much, Jake, for your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. All right. Thanks guys. Stay healthy.